computing but never really understood what it meant. After all, what do clouds have to do with computers? One way to think about the cloud is to treat it as another word for online. So storing your data on the cloud is just another way of saying you store your data online. As an example, think of email. In the past, if you had an email account, your emails were downloaded and stored on your own computer. If you lost your computer, you lost your email. Now things have gotten easier. With web-based emails like Gmail or Yahoo Mail, your email sits on their servers and you can access it anywhere you have an internet connection. In other words, your email is on the cloud. So things like Gmail and Yahoo Mail could be thought of as email on the cloud. And it's the same for storing photos. In the past, you stored photos on your computer, on your own hard disk, and if you lost your computer, you lost your photos. Now, you have Flickr that allows you to store your photos online. Or in other words, it allows you to store your email and photo storage as just examples of the many things we do online these days. We have accounting software, video editing software, even word processing software, all operated through your web browser. With things like Google Docs and Office 365, we've even moved word processing and Excel spreadsheets online so you can create, edit, save and collaborate all your documents on the cloud. The only software you need installed on your own computer would be a web browser and that's it. Now there are good reasons to do this. First, companies like Flickr, Microsoft and Google are far better at keeping and archiving data than you. So it's far less likely that you lose your photos or documents due to a hard disk crash or a stolen laptop. Secondly, you don't have to worry about updates. Since the software sits on the cloud or on the cloud provider's servers, the cloud provider usually takes care of the software for you, including the updates and everything else. Lastly, it's price. Unlike traditional software that you install on your computer, cloud offerings have a different pricing model. So instead of forking out 500 ringgit for a copy of Microsoft Office, you pay 29 ringgit a month. Sure, in the long run, this works out to be more, but you can always cancel your cloud subscription after a month or two months or three months, but you can't cancel a CV that you've bought from Microsoft. The benefits of being able to view your documents anywhere in the world, on any machine, and not having to worry about updating the software means a lot of people, and especially companies, prefer the cloud computing model. Now, what we described is the simplest form of cloud computing that offers the entire software as a service, or more commonly known as SaaS which is the predominant type of cloud computing you find out there. There is also infrastructure as a service that offers just the machinery involved to host your applications. That's called IaaS, and we'll cover that in a future video. For now, it's just worthwhile to remember that cloud is just another word for online.